Okay. Uh, so today we have uh, Jan Michel Blasi. He is from the University of Geneva. Uh, he is uh, now in the group of uh, Geraldine Hack. Uh, and he's expert on quantum transport, uh, quantum thermodynamics, and uh, many quantums there. <laughs> So he's going to present a recent work that has been uh, done in collaboration with a experimentalist. Uh, previously, uh, he was in Pisa with uh, Fabio Tadei and Alessandro Bra Braggio uh, doing a, a PhD thesis on uh, normal superconductor systems or something like that, right? Josephson Junction in a topological system. Okay, topologi topological system. Okay. Uh, well, and today he's going to talk about this recent work on hybrid system, yeah. right? So thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Rosa, for first of all, inviting me in your research group. And thank you everybody to, to be here. Good afternoon, first of all. Yes, indeed. My name is uh, Gian Michele Blasi. I work with uh, Gerald Dinac uh, at the University of Geneva in, uh, in Switzerland. And today I'm going to present you a very recent work that we uh, published uh, uh, on the archive a few weeks ago, uh, a work that I did in collaboration with Gerald Dinac and uh, Francesco Giazzotto, who is an experimentalist working uh, in Pisa, maybe you know. Uh, the work, as you can guess from the title, is about uh, hybrid normal superconducting arano bomb quantum thermal device. But uh, before going into the details of all the words in this uh, very complicated title, uh, and so before diving directly into the core of this presentation, let me first give you uh, a very brief outlines of, of the contents we were going to see. Uh, first of all, uh, since I was told that the audience also online is quite uh, broad, uh, I will first set the, the framework in which we are going to move. And so the framework is uh, that of uh, uh, quantum thermodynamics. And precisely, I will focus on the, the very new and successful subfield of phase coherent uh, uh, calorectronics. So I will explain what are these fields, what are the main goals and the main questions, and also uh, some of the most important uh, and paradigmatic systems and models in this, in this context. Then I will move discussing the, the actual system uh, under consideration in my work. A system that, as you can guess, is just a combination of a metallic aranom, uh, arano bomb ring embedded in a two-terminal normal superconducting uh, uh, setup. And then I will go directly to uh, the results in which I will explain uh, that such a kind of system can be used in a very, very different ways. For example, we can use it as a thermoelectric device uh, in the sense that it can produce charge currents uh, upon the application of an external thermal gradient. This can be used as a very efficient quantum heat engine in the sense that this can convert efficiently uh, heat fluxes into uh, electrical generated power. And also it can be used as a heat diode in the sense that one can force heat currents uh, flowing through the system uh, preferentially in one of the two possible directions. Uh, so, First of all, let's start with, uh, with, with the basic idea. What is quantum thermodynamics? Uh, let's say that the main goal of quantum thermodynamics is that of investigating uh, thermodynamical properties in quantum mesoscopic systems uh, embedded in uh, multi-terminal setups. Uh, however, I think that the best way to understand the quantum thermodynamics uh, is maybe first to understand what is the main difference between traditional thermoelectrical devices and quantum thermoelectrical devices. Let's say that uh, in the context of traditional thermoelectrical devices, such a kind of systems have uh, typical dimension, which are much larger with respect to uh, the so-called scale of thermalization, which is the distance over which uh, electrons relax toward the local equilibrium. And because such a system uh, uh, have no structure uh, in a scale smaller than the scale of thermalization, one, for example, can use a Boltzmann transport equation to compute main quantities, such as heat, energy, and charge currents. However, uh, this is completely different in the quantum regime because uh, uh, quantum thermoelectrical systems 
uh, have sizes which are comparable or much smaller with co in, in comparison with the, the scale of thermalization. And so in this context, at that scale, one cannot avoid to deal with the purely quantum phenomena, such as quantization, superposition, uh, entanglement, and coherence. And so in a certain sense, the very goal of quantum thermodynamics is that of using these uh, quantum properties in order to hopefully improve uh, classical outputs in terms of efficiency or electrical power. And in the other way around, one can use this uh, uh, classical, uh, uh, classical uh, uh, outputs in order to characterize quantum mesoscopic system uh, on a thermodynamical point of view. Let me add also that uh, um, very recently, uh, uh, in the context of quantum thermodynamics, uh, uh, obtained a lot of attention a very new and successful field, which is uh, uh, the field of phase coherent uh, uh, calorytronics. Uh, here, the main idea is that to control heat and uh, charge fluxes uh, uh, flowing inside uh, your system, by exploiting uh, uh, one of the most important uh, properties of quantum mechanics, which is the quantum mechanical phase of the wave, wave functions of particles. And in this context, uh, two of the most uh, important, let's say, uh, systems that one can consider uh, are indeed the Aronobom ring, which is just a metallic ring embedded between, for example, two normal uh, uh, contacts, uh, and also the so-called Josephson junctions. Josephson junctions are just uh, uh, hybrid uh, superconducting systems in which superconducting uh, uh, terminals are put in contact with uh, other materials. Uh, let me say that in the context of Aronobom ring, it has been shown, for example, in two very recent work by Geraldinac and Francesco Giazzotto, that it is possible uh, by uh, applying an external magnetic flux to modify this quantum phase, uh, inducing a quantum interference effect that breaks particle symmetry, which generates thermoelectricity, meaning that indeed by applying a thermal gradient upon the terminals of, of your system and by controlling it with, with this magnetic field, you can obtain a fluxes of charge current flowing in your system. In the same spirit, uh, this is also possible uh, in the context of Josephson junction, uh, which also can be exploited uh, as a thermal rectifiers. And the way you obtain thermal rectification and uh, um, uh, thermoelectricity by using Josephson junction is indeed by exploiting two of the most important properties of superconductor. The first one is related to the so-called Andrev reflections, which are coherent uh, processes that transform an electron into a hole and vice versa at interfaces with superconductors. And for example, we demonstrated in, in a couple of works uh, uh, with my uh, supervisors, uh, Alessandro Braggio and Fabio Taddei in Pisa, and also with uh, Professor Liliana Recea from University of Buenos Aires, that I guess you know uh, very well, that uh, one can tune and control such a kind of under uh, inter interferometrics effect in order to produce uh, uh, thermoelectricity almost in the same way one does it with, with the Aronov bomb ring. And also the other very important property of, uh, of superconductors is that uh, the gap of the superconductors, which is just the, the energy gap between the condensate of Cooper pairs and the quasi particle depends on temperature. Uh, more precisely, the, the value of the, this gap is maximal at very low temperature, and then it uh, uh, closes uh, when, when the temperature uh, passes the, the so-called critical temperature. And this thermal dependence of this gap order parameter uh, makes your system left-right asymmetric upon the exchange of the thermal gradient. And this can be indeed be exploited uh, in order to build uh, heat diodes, uh, which are the, the thermal uh, uh, equivalents of electrical diodes. So basically you can force heat current to flow just in one direction uh, instead of the other. Uh, Ah, sorry. Uh, for the moment, what I did is just to describe what is quantum thermodynamics. 
I focus on the phase coherent calorotronics context. And here I show two of the most relevant system you can have there. Uh, now, what I will do for, for the rest of my presentation is, uh, um, uh, is discussing my contribution, my work, which indeed consists in the combination of the Arano bomb ring from one side with the superconducting components on the other. And uh, uh, what one can obtain indeed is a hybrid normal superconducting Arano bomb device. The system under consideration indeed is the one you can see uh, here which consists in the middle region of a metallic Arano bomb ring, which is characterized by this parameter tau, uh, which corresponds to the transmission probability uh, for a particle that go from one terminal to the ring and vice versa. This ring can be controlled through the application, again, of an external uh, magnetic flux or uh, by uh, electrically, by applying an external uh, uh, gating, electrical gating. And uh, uh, as you can notice, this uh, uh, Arano bomb ring is embedded between the two uh, terminals. The left one is a normal metallic terminal at the temperature uh, Tn, and the right one instead is a superconducting terminal at the temperature Ts. You can notice also that uh, here at interface with superconductor, I consider a, um, a contact resistance, which basically uh, is parameterized by this parameter Z, which is a transparency parameter. When Z is equal to zero, the interface is ideal. Otherwise, the interface is not ideal. Uh, in the middle part of the slide, I also reported the uh, dispersional relation curves for the normal metal and the superconductor. Uh, so basically, I represented energy versus uh, uh, momentum. But notice that because here we deal with the superconducting component, together with the presence of electrons, we also have to account for the presence of a hole because of the under reflection mechanism that I mentioned before. So electrons and holes uh, uh, together uh, scattered inside the system. And that's why here I represented the, in black the dispersion relation for the electron and the in dashed lines the dispersion relation for, for the holes. Notice also that in the, in the case of the superconducting terminal, a gap is open, the superconducting gap, which indeed mixes electrons and holes originating quasi-electrons and quasi holes. Now, in the middle part uh, of uh, the region here, we have the scattering uh, region, which is characterized by its uh, uh, scattering matrix uh, uh, calligraphic S, which is just the combination of the scattering matrix describing the Arano bomb ring and the scattering matrix describing the NS interfere, uh, interface. And basically, this is the matrix that uh, contains information about uh, uh, under reflections. Uh, now, the way we characterize uh, such a system is by computing uh, uh, charge and heat current, respectively IN and JN at the normal lead, by using uh, the, uh, the so called Landauer Boutiquer uh, uh, formalism. Now, without going too much into details of this formula, what I want just to, uh, to highlight here is that the square modulus of the scattering matrix appearing here gives you the information about the probability for particle to go from one lead to another. Here we have the difference of the Fermi functions that gives you information about the occupation population in the different, uh, in the different reservoirs. And here we have the, the charge of electrons to compute the charge current and the energy minus the chemical potential in the normal lead to compute the, uh, the heat current. Uh, so uh, at this point, the first thing that we want to verify by computing these currents is uh, if our system is a thermoelectrical system. Indeed, if our system can generate fluxes of charge currents upon the application of a thermal bias. In order to do so, we consider our device in the so-called linear response regime, where delta T and delta V basically are much smaller than the thermal energy KBT. And one can easily verify that by linearizing the landauer boutiquer formula uh, here, one can express this uh, charge and uh, heat current in terms of the so-called uh, Onsager coefficients. Here, L11 is the electrical conductance, L22 is the thermal conductance, and 
L1-2 and L2-1, which are related through the Dion Sager reciprocal relations, are called the thermoelectrical coefficients. Uh, now, it is possible to exploit these uh, Onsager coefficients also in order to obtain a uh, very important figure of merit uh, in the context of thermoelectricity, which is the Seebeck coefficient, which is just the ratio between delta V, the thermal voltage, induced by the application of an external thermal gradient, delta T, when the charge current is equal to zero. And in the linear response regime, this indeed corresponds to this ratio here. L12 divided L11 uh, times 1 over T. Uh, here, uh, uh, we arrive at the first result that we obtained, in which we uh, indeed computed the, the Lecibe coefficient in the linear response regime. However, in order to single out uh, the role of the Aronov bomb ring, here we focused on two different uh, configurations. A configuration uh, which is referred to the top panels I and B, in which we don't have the ring. So basically, we have just a, a normal superconducting Josephson junction and a, a configuration at the bottom panels in which we instead account for the presence of the ring. Uh, also, we consider two different regimes, the so-called Andrev approximation regime, the left panels, which is obtained basically when the energy gap delta is much smaller than the Fermi energy and also the, 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 the regime in which we go beyond the under approximation, the, the right panels. Uh, in that case, the delta is comparable to, to the Fermi energy. And uh, this distinction between these two different regimes is very important because most of the papers and the works you, you can find in literature mostly focuses on this under approximation regime. But we will understand in a uh, moment that this is not uh, really the, the, the best situation possible if one is interested in the thermoelectrical uh, response for the system. And in order to understand that, let us focus for the moment on panel A, in which indeed we have just a normal superconducting junction in the under approximation regime. And as you can see here, the Seebeck coefficient for all values of the temperature and all values of the transparency coefficient is exactly equal to zero. Instead, in order to obtain a finite Seebeck coefficient, so a finite thermoelectrical response, you have to go beyond the under approximation, in which case you can see that the Seebeck coefficient is finite and also can reach values of a uh, few tenths of uh, microvolt per Kelvin. So the first take home message here is that if one is interested in uh, uh, understanding what are the thermoelectrical properties of an hybrid superconducting systems, then you have to move beyond the under approximation. Otherwise, the Seebeck coefficient is zero, at least in, uh, in the case of a simple NS Josephson junction. The story completely changes instead if we add the, the, the ring, so we account for the presence of the ring. Indeed, as you can see here, uh, if the ring is present, even under the under approxim approximation, you have a, uh, a finite Seebeck coefficient, which can reach the value of 100 microvolt per Kelvin uh, for temperatures below the critical temperatures, and also a uh, few uh, hundreds of uh, microvolt per Kelvin beyond the critical temperature. And even better, if you move beyond the under approximation, uh, you, you can also achieve values of the order of one millivolt per Kelvin, which is quite uh, uh, impressive for, 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 this, uh, for this kind of hybrid superconducting uh, uh, devices. So the other important take home message here is that uh, the combination of uh, an, S, an NS interface with the Arano bomb ring is beneficial uh, for, thermal, for thermoelectricity, even within the under approximation. And this is mainly due to the uh, interferences introduced by, uh, by the ring. Uh, now, the fact that we uh, obtain such very high values for, for the CBEC coefficients uh, inspired us to consider our system also as a quantum heat engine. Sure. Is, uh, we struggled a lot in really understanding what's going on there with, with Z, because as you can imagine, we have a lot of physics there. We have interference, quantum interference for the ring. We have 
under interference because of the presence of the superconductor. So it's not really easy to understand what's going on for, for different parameters. However, the only thing that maybe I can say about panel B, so when you are in the most simple case of a NS junction, when Z is very small, you are uh, in, the, in, the, in the regime in which you have just ideal under reflection processes. So the only process that can happen is indeed an electron that reflects back as a whole. Instead, if Z is different from zero, then you can also have ordinary uh, reflection. So electrons into electrons and holes into holes. So the Z equals zero, which corresponds to this curve, is uh, the, uh, just the, the, under, uh, the under reflection. And if this is the case, that means that you are probing a wind of energy inside the gap. And this situation, if the interface is ideal, is almost similar to the situation in the under approximation. That's why for z equal to zero, the CBA coefficient also is very small. Of course, then if you go uh, for, for a higher temperature, you're probing also the quasi-particle regime. And so something strange happens and you get again a finite CBA coefficient. Uh, we really didn't fully understand instead the, the, the presence of the plateau here, for example, for the CBA coefficient when you introduce the ring, both in the, uh, in the under approximation or uh, beyond the under approximation. This is still something that we can, uh, that we want to understand uh, better. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Uh, we really, we really uh, struggled a lot on understanding that. Uh, of course, this has been obtained for different values, uh, for specific values, sorry, of the, the magnetic flux. Uh, and uh, I actually maxim optimized the code in order to obtain uh, the maximal values of the CBA coefficient. But for sure, what I verify is that if you change uh, phi here, or you change the electrical gate, this behavior in Z also changes. It can happen uh, that, uh, that for higher Z, uh, it, it goes down and vice versa. So it's something that, that really uh, can be ascribed, in my opinion, to, to interferences and the controlling parameter more than, uh, uh, than the interface itself. No, no. Uh, in, my, in my experience with the topological the Josephson junctions, also there, the change of sign really uh, depends on uh, interferences. Uh, there, we didn't have a, um, a magnetic flux. We had just a uh, Josephson phase difference. And by changing this Josephson phase difference, you change basically the population of electrons versus the population of holes inside your, your thing, and you, you, you get a negative or positive CBA coefficient. But this is the, the, the only thing that I can say. Mm -hmm. uh, the BTK theory indeed is the, the exact theory that we, we, we use. Uh, th that they exploit just the, the under approximation regime. Uh, uh, namely, uh, uh, what is the under approximation regime? If this is imposed, the momentum uh, of uh, quasi particles and quasi electrons can be approximated with the KF, the Fermi momentum. If this is the case and you compute the transmission function, the transmission function is uh, uh, symmetrical in energy. This means that you don't break particular symmetry. And so you don't have a CBA coefficient. This is, this, this is the thing. Instead, if you go beyond, uh, the, the transmission function starts depending, uh, I mean, st start breaking particular symmetry. So it's uh, asymmetric in, uh, uh, in energy. And you get, uh, you get this, uh, you get finite super. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, uh, I was not clear. This uh, here is for beyond under approximation. This two here, this column is within under approximation. And yes, this row is just normal superconducting junction. And this row is with the, with the ring. This is it. Ken, Ken. Okay, 
but here you have to uh, here you you don't have actually a, a phase that can uh, can break the the symmetry because your transmission function when when you consider the uh, arano bomb ring depends on this parameter and really if you look at the plot of the transmission function by uh, changing phi you you break uh, the the uh, uh, the symmetry of the transmission function and indeed you get even in the under approximation regime uh, thermoelectricity No, 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 by itself, but by itself, no, by itself, no. Uh, no, by itself, no. So uh, the other thing that we're interested in now is uh, quantum heat engine to see if our system can uh, effectively and efficiently convert uh, heat fluxes into uh, electrical power, but in the non-linear response regime, meaning that here we are applying uh, a finite uh, thermal gradient, delta D. Uh, in order to do so, we consider our system uh, in a closed uh, circuit configuration. Basically, we attach uh, to the terminal of our system an external load uh, resistance. And of course, by applying a finite delta T, you get a finite thermal voltage uh, at, uh, at the terminals of the load resistance, which can be computed numerically by solving this uh, uh, integral uh, equation, which comes from, from the landauer butiker one. And basically, this is the, the Kirchhoff law for which the, the charge current in the normal lead should be equal to the charge current passing through the, the, the load resistance. And so once you compute the, the, thermo, the thermo voltage, you can achieve uh, the generated electrical power, which is just uh, dissipated on the load resistance, which is just the ratio between delta V squared divided by the load resistance itself. And also uh, one can define the efficiency, which is uh, the, the ratio between the generated electrical power P. And how does We consider that the, the wire is a superconducting wire, let's say, and uh, uh, I, I don't understand the, the, the lead. You, you mean inside, the, inside N? Uh, actually, uh, I, I'm attaching this wire to the lead, uh, not, not to the reservoir, but to, to, to the lead. So basically, indeed, the, the current that passes here through the system. Yeah. Yeah. This one? Okay. Yeah. Yes. 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 I mean, my, my, my system, my engine that I want to study is this blob here. So it's the combination of the, the ring with this uh, tau included. Okay. Uh, so uh, we were at uh, the definition of the efficiency, which is the ratio between the uh, the generated power divided by the uh, absorbed uh, uh, heat computed uh, at the thermal voltage, and here I represent the uh, the results of these performance quantifiers. In panel A, we have uh, indeed the, the power, and in panel B, we have the, the efficiency normalized with respect to the Carnot efficiency. Uh, both the quantity have been obtained for uh, uh, as a function of the external magnetic flux and for different uh, uh, electrical uh, uh, gating uh, VG. And uh, uh, here, the two most important things that one has to note are, first of all, that you can understand that by changing the fluxes or VG, one can really turn on and off this, uh, these quantities at will, which is very, very, very important and very nice for an experimental point of view. That means that you can control with the external tuning parameter uh, your performances of your machine, of your engine. And also the other important thing here is to notice that the efficiency uh, here 
can reach uh, the values of almost 55% of the Carnot uh, efficiency. And uh, this can be understood, uh, I mean, this is ascribable to the fact that here we are considering indeed a uh, superconducting lead that acts almost as a hundred mirror for heat current. So basically because of the presence of the superconductor, the amount of heat current flowing through the system is uh, smaller with respect to if this was a, a normal lead. And because this current heat current appears in the denominator of the, of the, uh, the efficiency, this efficiency uh, goes up or at least is, is, quite, uh, is quite good and also can be tuned. Uh, now, the, the final thing that uh, really I want to discuss is the other very important property of, of this system, which is the heat rectification. Uh, heat rectification basically is the ability for a system to break left-right symmetry under the exchange of the thermal bias, which forces heat current to flow preferentially in one direction. So, in order to understand and investigate this aspect, we consider our system in two configurations. The first configuration in which the normal lead uh, is hotter, I mean, as a um, uh, larger temperature with respect to, to, the, to the temperature of the superconductor, in which case we will generate a heat, uh, ch a heat current Jn plus going from the hotter lead to the colder one from left to right. And also we consider the reverse configuration in which we interchange the two temperatures of, uh, of the lead, in which case uh, the N is the colder reservoir and S is uh, uh, the hotter one. And so the uh, heat current uh, will flow uh, from the superconductor to, to the normal lead. So from right uh, to left. And notice here that because we are considering a superconducting uh, uh, component, uh, which gap depends on temperature. In the forward configuration, the temperature of the superconductor is smaller, so the gap is uh, larger, while in the reverse case, the, the gap uh, goes down. And so this breaks left-right symmetry of the system under the exchange uh, of, the, of the temperature, and this makes the forward heat current to be, in principle, different from the reverse current here. And uh, however, another important thing that I want to, to stress here is that since our system is a thermoelectrical system, so whenever you apply a thermal gradient between your terminals, you get a, a thermal voltage between the terminals, one has to compute these currents at the respective thermal voltage obtained in the forward and reverse configuration respectively. And these thermal voltages can be really obtained by solving uh, numerically this equation. Basically, you have to impose that the charge current of, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the normal lead uh, should be equal to zero in the forward and in the reverse configuration. So a way uh, uh, now to, to quantify uh, what's the amount of rectification that you get is by uh, considering this uh, ratio here, which is called uh, uh, rectification factor, which is just uh, the ratio between the, the forward heat current and the reverse uh, heat current. Of course, if R uh, is equal to one, we don't have rectification. If it's bigger than one, then J plus is greater than J minus and vice versa. Here, I uh, plotted this, uh, this result of the, of the rectification factor as a function of T hot and for different values of uh, uh, T cold. And the first thing that you can notice here is that when the cold is very small with respect to the critical temperature, then we can reach a rectification factor, which is almost 4.5. Uh, 4 that means that uh, the forward heat current is 350% uh, of the reverse configuration, which is a sizable difference that can be detected uh, experimentally. Uh, there is also uh, some, uh, a very detailed, that, but uh, I, I think it's very important to discuss, uh, is that uh, uh, with respect to a system which, uh, which do not manifest the thermoelectrical properties, we get uh, rectification factors uh, uh, different from one, even when the temperature of the cold reservoir is bigger than the critical temperature. Uh, what happens in this configuration uh, is that the gap of the superconductor is always closed. And so we end up with an effective 
n are non bomb n system so we don't have all uh, the gap of the superconductors is always closed and so you basically don't break left right symmetry at least you don't break it because of the presence of the gap and so why we get a finite rectification factor well because it can be shown directly numerically here that even if the gap is close uh, when uh, you in the in the forward configuration the, the value that you get for the uh, for the thermo voltage delta v plus is different from the value that you get from uh, from the reverse configuration in which you switch the two temperature and uh, uh, as a consequence jn jn plus of delta v plus is different from jn minus of delta v minus uh, uh, it's, it's a bit uh, it's a bit technical the, the only way i can really understand it is by looking at the, the landauer boutiquet equation in the landauer boutiquet equation you have the uh, the difference of the two fermi functions let's say that uh, uh, the you you fix the 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 mu uh, of the superconductor to, to zero and you you have just the, the v in the other lead what happens, so uh, let's, uh, let's consider the, the forward configuration where Tn is greater than Ts. Then when you invert the temperature, because of this difference, and you, you try to solve this equation, you easily realize that uh, uh, in order to, to this to be zero, the, the delta V minus is not exactly minus delta V plus. It, it, it is better to, to, to see it uh, on a... On a, on a uh, effectively, yes, yes. Uh, uh, with that, uh, uh, ah, yeah, I have just uh, one more uh, slide, uh, really the, the, the final one, uh, in which I want to show you uh, how, for example, one can tune this rectification factor as a function of the external parameters. Again, here you can tune the external parameters in order to turn it on and off this rectification factor. And also another important quantity, uh, another important result that, uh, that is important to, uh, to understand here is, for example, this, uh, this plot in which I plotted the, the rectification factor against the, uh, the heat current uh, in order to understand uh, what's the amount of rectification you get with respect to the, to the size of the, uh, of the heat current you have through uh, your system. And uh, uh, even if you see that the best rectification is obtained for values of the heat current that are very, very low. Uh, however, for high values of the, the cold uh, temperature here, we can have the maximal uh, um, uh, heat current uh, corresponding to a few tenths of, uh, of a nanowatt, which is still a sizable quantity that, that can be measured, uh, when we have also uh, a very finite uh, rectification uh, almost of the, of the order of 50%. So, with that, I really, uh, uh, let, let me uh, draw my, my final conclusion. In this presentation, I have uh, presented you this uh, hybrid uh, uh, normal superconducting Arano bomb system that really takes advantage from, uh, you know, the quantum interference effect coming from the Arano bomb ring and the superconducting property of, uh, of, uh, of the superconducting lead. Uh, by exploiting these properties, we uh, uh, have been able to uh, build a hybrid, not only in the sense that we, are, uh, uh, we have an hybrid combination of normal metals with superconducting materials, but also in the sense that it is a, a hybrid multitasking thermodynamical uh, uh, device, uh, which allow us to obtain sizable CBE coefficient in the linear response regime very high values of the efficiency uh, for the quantum heat engine and also uh, very high uh, rectification factors. Uh, as a really final comment, let me say that um, Francesco Giazzotto is uh, experimentally implementing this uh, system at, uh, at the labs at NEST in, uh, in Pisa. Uh, and uh, as far as I know, they uh, managed to, to get the, the sample, to, they, they have prepared everything and they, they are ready to uh, to, to run the, the, the measurements. And so we hope that they, they will see uh, at least some of our prediction. So with that, I just say thank you. And uh, if you have questions. Thank you, thank you for the nice uh, presentation. Uh, well, uh, there were already some questions, but uh, there is some room for more. Yes, please. 
Could you comment on uh, how is the trade-off relation between power and efficiency in your quantum heat engine? Uh, indeed, this is this is a, a very interesting. Uh, as you can see from from this results here, uh, the the two quantities really uh, looks very very similar, uh, at least as a function of the external uh, uh, parameters. This is not a bad thing at all, and uh, actually is, is quite good because that means that whenever you get the maximal power, you also get the maximal efficiency. So if you will plot a lasso diagram, for example, power versus efficiency, what you will obtain is a kind of a straight line. So by changing your parameter, you always get the maximum efficiency wherever there is the maximal power. And this can be again understand by looking at the definition of efficiency, basically because the heat current at the denominator is small and almost constant for, for, the, for the parameter. Of course, I have to, to verify that. The, the efficiency is just proportional to, to, to the power, at least uh, as a function of the controlling uh, uh, parameters. Uh, but what if, if you tune the voltage bias between the two terminals? Uh... Uh, actually, the, the, the way I obtain uh, uh, this is just by putting the, the, the thermal bias. By putting the thermal bias, we, we, you have a response in terms of the thermal voltage that generates at, your, at, your, uh, uh, at the terminus of your uh, load resistance. And this is the way you can characterize the, the, uh, the efficiency. You, you don't, uh, if I understood correctly, we, we don't... Um, tune the, the, the electrical bias uh, from, from the beginning. We just have a control of the, uh, of the thermal bias there. Yeah, for me, it's a bit confusing because in the normal thermal electricity, uh, when you tune the uh, voltage bias, then uh, only when the voltage bias is half of the stopping voltage, you get the maximum power. But it seems like the situation is different. Uh, so maybe we can discuss. Yeah, but uh, uh, here what we're interested in is uh, the quantum heat engine. So basically, if we want to understand, because the system is a thermoelectrical device, if you can get a thermal voltage on the top of the load resistance when you have just a thermal uh, a thermal bias. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we maybe we can ask us later. Maybe I, I didn't understand the, well the the, the the question. Sorry. Yes, my comment or question is about the sizes. Do the sizes matter of the ring or the leads? Totally. Or are, are you assuming that the leads are like bulk pieces yeah. of bulk? The, 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 the usual assumption is that the lead are just you know, infinite reservoirs, which are characterized by a chemical potential and a fixed temperature. So we really don't care about the, uh, you know, the size of the, the superconducting and the normal lead in our case. Uh, however, uh, the, the effect really depends on uh, the sizes, for example, of the arms of your, uh, uh, of your ring. What we verify, for example, that the best way to obtain the best, uh, uh, I don't know, efficiency or the, the best thermoelectrical current is having arms which are equal, uh, while in the case of normal, normal, uh, this is not uh, this is not true anymore. You you have to have an imbalance between the length of the two uh, of the two arms. And uh, another thing that can be uh, interesting uh, is to consider, uh, uh, for example, very large uh, ring, in which case you will have uh, decoherence. And in this way, you can go from the quantum. To, to, to the classical and the, a way that uh, uh, together with Geraldine we discussed this, uh, this, uh, this specific thing is by adding or a Boutiquer probe you know, in one of the arm or uh, uh, talking about scattering maps, you can just add a defacing uh, um, component here. Basically, every time that an electron passes through one of the arms, you get a phase and then you average uh, over the phases. And this effectively introduces the coherence that makes your system more classical than uh, than than quantum, and uh, so this is a is a is a, is a good way to to you know to understand what is the the the, the trade off between a quantum regime a classical regime what we can do in a quantum regime what we can do instead in a classical regime. So, uh, more questions. 
So I have a difficulty with experimental realization of these uh, um, because, of course, these hybrid uh, structures are tricky. Um, I mean, you're considering, or Yatsoto uh, are considering um, metallic samples, or they, they're considering this uh, two deg uh, with the indium uh, arsenide here. I'm and the, not an expert. And the ring as well is a, is a uh, semiconductor. Yeah, the ring, the ring. Okay. And then for the for the superconducting uh, um, lead, uh, because uh, it, uh, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's, it behaves well with the, with this kind of uh, materials you can consider or aluminium on niobium, and I think this is what they are trying to do uh, right now at uh, at the nest. Uh, I'm sure of just one thing that now for now they are they are trying to do normal normal and see uh, I mean uh, thermal electricity and whatever with the superconducting lead is something that they they I, I don't know if they are really doing this. Okay, okay. so uh, more questions. So here you have shown that uh, your device can work as an engine. But uh, can you find all, all also another operating mode like a refrigerator or maybe I, uh, to invert the heat flow? I from... mean, uh, uh, whenever we understood that it is possible to 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 uh, control the fluxes uh, uh, of current uh, at will by tuning the external parameter, the, the the other interesting thing would be for sure that of considering our our device as a as a refrigerator, for example. We didn't specifically discuss this uh, this aspect. We just uh, discussed the, the the heat engine one. But uh, for, for sure, there is this uh, this uh, this possibility, and uh, it would be interesting to to characterize mm -hmm. this. And and a more general setup could be to have two superconductors. Yeah, yeah. Because then maybe having different uh, relation for the gap with the temperature. True. Then you can also have this rectification. Maybe the normal case is the, uh, the limit. Or yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, case. Uh, this is something that I want to to to, to really see because uh, in the case of superconductor superconductor you don't only have the 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 magnetic flux there but you can have for example Josephson bias and uh, really you can exploit an, another additional parameter mm -hmm. which is this this one can be uh, interesting too the, what we see for example is with the uh, superconducting superconducting the systems. Uh, in topological uh, uh, materials, uh, the phase, the Josephson phase, is very important, not only for thermal electricity, but also for, for the rest. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quite interesting. Uh, maybe the last question. Okay. Uh, can I ask one question? If we replace this normal metal Arono bomb ring with superconduction ring with weak link, so with, uh, so to say, kind of squid. Mm -hmm. uh, will be will it change behavior of the system as a thermal thermoelectric uh, machine or thermal engine and blah blah blah, blah. Uh, they will change uh, uh, qualitatively but not, not quantitatively in, in the sense that I still expect uh, uh, thermo thermoelectricity there uh, both within or without the, the under approximation uh, but then, of course, is uh, uh, well. You have just to consider quasi-particles instead of uh, uh, particles running in. Uh, in because your... experimentally, it's much more easier to deal with superconducting rings understand, than this normal. Understand. Understand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah indeed. Sh shouldn't change. Shouldn't change. At least uh, on the possibility to get thermal electricity. I, I'm pretty sure that you will get thermal electricity, uh, even that maybe with some uh, something different that. Uh, we have to see. Okay, so no more questions. I think that we can close the seminar today, given the our thanks to thank you, thank the speaker. You. Thank you. I have to. No, no plans. Morning, no, 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 no meetings. We, we can meet and discuss if you want. Okay, I can meet it this until 11 more or less. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will try to. Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah, 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 I will be here actually at 9 30.
it depends on the buses. <laughs> okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.